So for this clip, we'll be talking about the concept of interest parity, which describes uh, how an equilibrium in the foreign exchange market uh, is attained. It is uh, what is as well called a no arbitrage condition. And in this little clip, uh, we'll do a few things. You'll see that I have uh, three uh, lined, out, lined up here already. First, we're going to have an ex intuitive example uh, that uh, details the investment decision, uh, essentially, uh, to invest a dollar that you have uh, either in the U.S. at the U.S. interest rate of RUS or in Europe at the interest rate RU, R, REU that you can earn there. So you see that we have, con have two countries, US and Europe, uh, and two assets. Each of them offers a bond that pays a fixed uh, rate of interest over uh, the considered time period. And so we'll consider this intuitive example. Second, uh, based on that, uh, we'll derive uh, what's called uh, UIP, the uncovered interest parity condition, or simply the interest parity condition. There's as well a covered interest parity condition, but we'll not get into that now. And third, uh, <coughs> we conclude with uh, a concise uh, statement of uh, the UIP and uh, what it means. So well, let me flip to a new page and begin here with one namely that example to uh, show clearly what we mean we have here a timeline so we have a time t which is today and then we have a time t plus one which is tomorrow you can consider this time t the beginning of the year and t plus one the end of the year we consider only this one time period and and that's all that we need to have right here so uh, then uh, we said we have uh, one dollar to invest and that goes either to the US or to Europe so if we invest in the US bond we would have at the end of the period uh, one plus our US that is just the one dollar and the interest that you earn on that dollar uh, with that bond uh, the alternative option is to invest in uh, the euro bond uh, to do so, uh, you you must uh, do a few things. First, you must buy euros. In order to buy the bond, you must buy euros. And uh, for that, uh, um, we need to know what the exchange rate is. So uh, let's define the notation here. ET is the exchange rate that prevails at the beginning of the period, and it denotes the dollar price of one euro. Uh, let me fix that one euro and uh, so that of course the inverse of that is the euro price of a dollar and so uh, at the beginning of the period you use your one dollar and you buy um, whatever euros you can get for that so that you have at time t one over et euros so that is what you have at this time you then proceed to uh, invested in the euro bond so that at the end of the period you have at the end of the period you have one plus r e u times one over e t euros right. so you then proceed to exchange that money at the time t plus one back to dollars because you need dollars to make use of the money in the country where you live which is presumably the u.s and uh, how do you do that? Well, you buy euros. You use the whole amount to buy euros. So this is the amount of euros that you have. And uh, how many dollars you get for that? Well, ET plus one. Uh, so you get an amount of ET, one plus REU times that ratio ET plus one over ET. So ultimately what you want to do in order to make the investment decision is compare this amount and this amount. Whichever of these two is larger, is uh, what you can invest your money in. Now, the trick is, and let me go to a clean page to show that. Uh, first, um, so we're still with this example. 
Uh, so we have on the on the one hand we have the US with one plus R US, and on the other hand we have the EU with one plus R EU times ET plus one over ET. Now the issue here is that we don't know what ET plus one is. ET plus one is the expected uh, is the exchange rate that prevails at the end of the period so we don't know what that is which is why we can make our calculation only based on the expected exchange rate so add let's add again here notation et plus one superscript e is the exchange rate expected at time t to prevail at time t plus 1. Very important, of course, the distinction between uh, the actual exchange rate and the ex expected exchange rate. Now, based on that though, today we can make a comparison between these two, so that essentially um, we're going to make our decision based on whichever of these we expect to be larger. And the arbitra arbitrage condition then means that in equilibrium the two have to be really equal. So that on the right hand side the return that we earn in the US has to be equal to the return that we earn in Europe in dollars given our expectation of the exchange rate. Uh, we'll we'll see in more detail what that means. Let's now uh, go to two and show really the derivation of of that condition. So first of all, I'm going to show you the following trick here. Uh, e E T plus one over E T. Uh, minus one plus one is of course the same same expression now minus one you can write as well as et over et plus one so that this term here is e et plus one minus et over et plus one and in turn this here is a growth rate it's the value prevailing at time t uh, compared to the value we expect to prevail at time t plus 1. So this is the expected growth rate of the exchange rate, or put differently, the expected depreciation of the US dollar uh, plus 1. Uh, so uh, let's add this here as well since this can potentially lead to some con confusion. So again, ET is the dollar price of a euro, which means that uh, a rise in this ratio implies uh, a depreciation of the dollar. So uh, the dollar you loses value because you have to put more dollars on the table for uh, for every euro that you want to buy so uh, with that we can rewrite this this ratio here with this expression and uh, I can summarize 1 plus R US equal to 1 plus R EU times 1 plus the expected depreciation of the dollar. Uh, so actually, uh, let me write this as the expected depreciation uh, at time t over the period. Okay, so this is this way. It's uh, more precise. Now, uh, this right-hand side here, we can uh, multiply out and I'll see that that's u plus e hat e t plus the interaction term e hat e t 
and we're going to make the assumption, simplifying assumption, that this is very close to zero and therefore can be neglected. You see if the exchange rate uh, depreciation is relatively small and the interest rate is relatively small, these are small numbers, so that uh, it can be uh, neglected and we can approximate uh, we can approximate this as 1 plus R U S equal to 1 plus R E E U plus E hat E T which is of course equal to R U is equal to R U plus E hat E T. So this is this is what it is. This is the statement of the approximated um, UIP. So on the left hand side, the um, return on the investment in the US in equilibrium is equal to the sum of the uh, return on the euro bond and the expected depreciation. So uh, that said, let's go to a new page and uh, get this concise statement and in interpretation. Uh, let's just rewrite it RUS equal to REU plus E hat ET. UIP or IP, the interest parity condition, the no arbitrage condition in the financial market. So, um, why would these two be equal in equilibrium in the financial market? That is the question. Uh, to answer that, let us consider a case where uh, they wouldn't be equal. So let's say RUS is larger than REU plus uh, E hat ET, or more precise, let's say that we have uh, that the interest rate in the US is 5%, the interest rate in Europe is 2%, and the expected depreciation is two percent, so that the right hand side is larger. Uh, the left hand side is larger than the right hand side, and uh, we uh, can now um, develop an argument uh, how equality between the left and right hand side is established. How would that happen? What would you do if you face this situation? Well, obviously, you would want to invest in the U.S. since the return there is higher. So people in Europe would want to invest in the US. What do they have to do in order to do that? They have to buy dollars. If they buy dollars today in the financial market, what happens? That means that ET rises, so that ET plus one minus ET over ET, I'm, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. The uh, uh, ET falls, right? So uh, the exchange rate defined as dollar price of a euro, in fact, falls in this situation since uh, people are selling the euro, buying the dollar, which means that the value of the dollar rises in relation to the euro so that we have a dollar appreciation and the exchange rate falls. So if the exchange rate today falls, what happens to this ratio? This ratio rises. Notice that this argument very crucially depends on uh, the assumption that our expectation of what the exchange rate is t tomorrow hasn't changed. So because we have appreciation today and a fixed expectation of what the exchange rate is tomorrow, we have higher expected depreciation. So this change here, the rise in the expected depreciation over time establishes a rise here to 3% and then Europeans will stop to invest in U.S. securities or you know, to stop uh, buying dollars in order to invest into securities. And uh, given that this hasn't changed, uh, we are now in equilibrium. So there are, of course, complications. Let me finish on that note. On that note, uh, first is that the expectations might change and we might, uh, different market participants might have different expectations. People might as well uh, want to add 
uh, risk premia uh, so that certain countries, so let's say a, a 1% interest rate in the U.S. is not the same as uh, as a 1% uh, interest rate in a country that is considered to have high political risk or high default risk, so that these things matter, but in the simplest form, uh, in, in abstracting from some of these issues, uh, the uncovered interest parity condition describes how uh, the foreign exchange market comes to equilibrium.